Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and we are going to start with the Elastic Beanstalk follow along where we're going to look at how to deploy Elastic Beanstalk a variety of different ways so we know it inside and out. Um, I want to point out first before we get started here, make sure you are in the correct region. And we always do everything in US East 1 because that's where the most uh, abundance of AWS services are available, and it just makes things a lot easier. So just go up here and make sure you're in US East 1. And be very careful because AWS likes to switch out that region on you sometimes. So if you feel like things aren't going uh, the way that it should be going, just double check your region. So now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and make our way over to Cloud9 because we're going to need a, develop a developer environment uh, to run and test our application and then go ahead and uh, take that over and deploy to Elastic Beanstalk. So I'm going to go ahead here to Cloud9. I don't have any region or um, environments created here, so we'll go ahead and cr uh, create an environment. I'm going to name this uh, dev n e n v, which which is developer environment here. Uh, saying uh, not to use root account, I'm definitely not logged in as the root account, so I'm not sure why I'm getting that message. But we'll go ahead here, hit next, and what we're going to do is we're going to make sure this is a T2 micro. That's part of the free tier eligibility. We'll scroll down here, and we have the choice between Amazon Linux and Ubuntu. Uh, Amazon Linux one is supposed to be uh, uh, unsupported at some point because they want to use Amazon Linux two. Um, so if you're watching this in the future, maybe Amazon Linux two will be here. You'll have to use Ubuntu. But if Amazon Linux one is here, absolutely use it because it is amazing. Uh, we're going to leave the default uh, cost saving settings here to 30 minutes. So if we're not using, if we don't have any activity or we don't have the browser open here, it will shut down the server, save us money. Uh, it looks like it wants to create an IAM role. We'll let it go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and hit next. And down below, it has some best practices for us. Um, and just shows us a confirmation of what we're creating. This is all great. So just hit create environment. And we'll just have to wait here a little bit. And I'll see you here in a moment. All right, so our Cloud9 environment here is ready. And just before I get started, I like to use the dark theme. So I'm going to just switch it uh, down here to the classic dark theme. Uh, and I also like to use Vim. I would recommend uh, just using the default, but Vim is what I use. Um, that rebinds all the keys uh, for super efficiency. So, um, you know, it's just because I've been doing it for years. But anyway, um, now that we have our Cloud9 environment, let's actually get an application going here. And since this is uh, very developer focused, I think we should try to use the terminal as much as we can to get uh, as much experience as possible. The first thing I want you to do is I want you to uh, type in npm I C9 hyphen G. So C9, which is short for Cloud9, um, this is a, a Node.js utility that makes it easy to open files directly um, from uh, the terminal here. So you know we have this README file. And also just notice that see where it says environment. This actually maps to this dev uh, yeah, EVN directory. If I hover over there, you can see it'll autocomplete to that. So I don't know why uh, Cloud9 does that, but that's how they name it. But anyway, I just want to show you how C9 works. So we have a README in here. And if I just wanted to open it up, it actually is, I think, open right there. But if I just typed in ls, and then I typed in C9 README, then it would open up that README file. So that is going to give us um, a little bit of help along the way. So now that we have C9 installed, let's go set up the actual application itself. Um, and so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to type in mkdir, which makes a new directory. And we want to make that in our environment. So I'm going to use tilde to make sure I'm always at home. I'm going to type environment study sync is the name of the application we are creating today. And you can see up here that it created a folder. Okay. And we'll go ahead and we'll just create some additional files. So I'm just going to CD into that folder to save myself some trouble. Um, and the first thing we need to do is initialize an empty uh, init, or, uh, node project. So we'll do npm init hyphen y. Okay. And what that did is created a package.json for us here, which we will adjust uh, momentarily. But we uh, want to run a web app. So we're going to need some kind of web framework. So we're going to go ahead and use uh, Express. Okay. So we'll go ahead and type that in. And what's, it, what's that going to do? It's going to add it as a dependency there. So now we can use Express. Um, the next thing we want to do is we're going to need some uh, initial files to work with here. So I'm going to type in touch. We're going to type in main.js. Uh, we'll probably need um, index.html. Actually, not instead of main, we'll call it index. I think actually I normally call it index. Uh, then we will have um, index.html, app.js, and style.css. 
And so that created all the initial files that we uh, need to work with. And so now we just need to uh, populate those files. So the first thing I want to do is I want to have a way of actually running our application here in Node. So we're going to add a new script up here called start. Okay, and we'll just type in node main.js. Actually, I'm going to call that index there. And uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start populating these files. So if you make your way over to the GitHub and you go to exam pro co, the free AWS developer associate, uh, there is a folder in here called study sync 000. And these are the files that we're going to copy on over. So the first is the index.js. So we'll go there and just hit raw. And we'll copy the contents here. And we'll double click on that. And we'll just paste it. Then we will uh, click back here. And we'll go grab the styling. Okay, we'll hit raw. It's not that important for you to know how to program. Um, but I mean, you know, we need to get as comfortable as we can here. So we're not going to really need to learn all this stuff that we're doing just copy paste it through. Um, and we just need I think the app.js file. Yep, the JavaScript file here. And we will grab all that data. And so those are the three files we need. And just to give you a very quick tour of what's going on here. Uh, we have this index.html file. Oh, I guess we didn't populate that. Okay. Give me uh, two seconds here. Sometimes you think you do something and you don't. So anyway, the index.html file loads this style.css file, which is located there. What we're doing is we're using uh, a CDN to pull in Mithril, which is a, a JavaScript front-end framework. We are going to use app.js uh, to uh, load our JavaScript. Um, going over to our JavaScript here, we're using the Mithril framework. So it's very simple. We have this app here. And the idea is it's, we're going to have a question. And we have multiple choices. And we can submit the, the answer somewhere. Uh, and then we just have some plain styling in CSS. So um, now that we have that all uh, going, the next thing we need to do is actually preview this application. Because before we can deploy it and package it, we need to make sure that it is uh, working here. So I'm just going to go ahead here and close these tabs. Uh, and there's just going to be a couple things that we need to do next.